Welcome back to theCUBE here at our Palo Alto studio. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante, my co-host, here for the Silicon Valley AI Infrastructure Leaders Series with theCUBE and NYSE Wired. Bruno Gioli, he's here, CEO of Luminate. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, great to see you. Good to see you, man. Hey, thank you so much, I'm really happy to be here. So Bruno, you're almost out of stealth. Well, technically people know what you're doing because the website hasn't been updated yet, but tell us what you guys do. You're doing some pretty compelling things and, and we'll get into some of your experiences uh, with uh, some of the space conversations. Yeah, no, um, love to talk about it all, but Lumen is an energy company, right? We have this black box that we put as much energy storage as we want in there, and we're able to do that very effectively because we store hydrogen. We have a very neat way of storing hydrogen in what we call the solid state. Traditionally, hydrogen is stored either compressed or liquefied, and that requires a lot of energy. You need a compressor, you need a liquefier, and we just say, like, we don't need that. We have this special material, acts like a sponge, hydrogen flows over it from the electrolyzer, and it just stores it, right? Like, no energy in to actually store the hydrogen. And then when you want the energy out, we just put hydrogen into a fuel cell, and it's readily accepted, and electrical energy goes out. And so, you know, what we really want to do with this is just make a very, very reliable way to store energy. We, we look at the energy landscape yeah. today, and this is the connection to AI, and we, we see a few different things. Energy hardware is failing. You, you have power lines causing fires. Um, energy rates are going up and up, and there, there's really no end in sight. Yeah. And with the advent of AI data centers, more EVs on the grid, and, and simply people just wanting to run their AC more, these problems are going to happen all the time, and yeah. it's going to affect people everywhere. And we saw it. I mean, we saw it early with crypto, mining, you see it with AI. I mean, Microsoft's earnings, Dave, they couldn't get enough GPUs. They don't have enough capacity to run all their stuff. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Yes. So this is an innovation imperative. This yes. has to get done. How did it come about? What stumbled upon it? How'd you get here? What was the origination story? Yeah, so this is kind of interesting. This touches upon the space stuff I worked on, but uh, I used to work at SpaceX, and when I was in the cafeteria, I was kind of looking around and thinking about what I want to do with my life. I was about 24, 25, and I, I knew I wanted to start my own company, so I did the most classic out of college startup idea. There is an in space 3D printing with robot arms <laughs> galore, right? Like really crazy stuff. And I met my co-founder in grad school and we moved to California and we started trying to live on money we would make ourselves. And we quickly realized no one actually wants to build stuff in space. And so <laughs> we pivoted away from the actual 3D printing hardware and more into the materials we could 3D print. And one of those was very great at storing hydrogen in the solid state, and that's what we work on today. We started looking at it more and more, and what allowing yourself to store hydrogen in the solid state does yeah. is just cost-effective energy storage. Hydrogen just has a very low round-trip efficiency when you compress it or liquefy it, which makes it very difficult to actually have cost-effective ways to make money over long periods of time in an energy storage system. But like I said earlier, we don't do that. And so we were like, mm -hmm. let's just make big energy storage systems. And that was about two years ago. And so since then, we've just been building and building and building. And so coming out of the garage, I think of May of 2023, that's when we got our first check from our investors, 1517. And since then, we've deployed a 30 kilowatt hour energy storage system in Monterey, California. I'm actually going there tomorrow, and that's been operational for four or five months now. And then we're deploying a system that has 220 kilowatt hours of storage in San Francisco as well. And that'll be permitted by the city. It'll actually be providing green energy to a warehouse down in San Francisco and it'll reduce the load on the grid by 75%, which is really great. So at Dell Tech World, John, mm -hmm. Jeff yeah. Clark, Cube alum, yeah. guy we know well, in his keynote said, we, we're going to need 520 gigawatts of power by 2030, which is 8x 
the power mm -hmm. today. Obviously the percentage that's coming from, from technology and IT and data centers is, is rising dramatically. It used to be relatively small. I don't know what the number is. You probably do you know, to three or 4%. So if I understand it correctly, you've got this long-term reliable energy storage. You're going to be attacking that problem. Yes. Uh, where did this idea come from? Was it somebody's head? Did you guys read a paper that was written 30 years ago and said, hey, we can actually put this to, to, into commercial applications? What's the genesis of that? We, I mean, we just really looked at the technology we had, right? I mean, literally at our lowest low, we had $8,000 in the bank account and we're two engineers kind of coming out of grad school, like thinking like, <laughs> we're, we gonna be, we're gonna be on the street almost. <laughs> so you had a blank sheet of paper. And you yeah. Said, All right, let's yeah. just noodle on this problem and we're gonna create it. And, and I think what's really great about our, our energy storage system is we can build these batteries today. We built our first one in the garage, right? It, it's just taking our material and applying hydrogen to it. And then we received our first check and we just did that, but at larger scales. And that's just literally what we do every day, right? You wonder what the neighbors were thinking. What are those guys doing in the garage? You love the garage. <laughs> what are they, what, what kind of lab do they got going yeah. on over there? It, I mean, hydrogen, I mean, think about, first of all, explain the, the dangers and upside of hydrogen. Some people might think of the Hindenburg blowing up, mm -hmm. um, but is it dangerous? Obviously there's asphyxiation, potential risks. Is there, were people, blow, was that non factor? What do people think of when they, it's not like nuclear, I mean, or, yeah. what is the, what, what, what's been the reaction? Take us through that. I mean, one of the first questions we got, how, do, how can you make sure you store it? Then we stored it. We never got that question again because we are really good at storing it. And now everyone's like, how do you permit it so it's actually safe? There are a lot of very safe ways to mm -hmm. interact with hydrogen, install firewalls, um, C1, D1 rooms, they're very, it's basically written down already. But yeah. what's really great with our technology is the majority of the hydrogen is not in the gaseous form. Got it on. can't catch on fire. It, it's stored inside the metal itself. And so if you're familiar with rust being iron and oxygen, it's like saying you're storing oxygen in rust, right? Yeah. It, you can't access that oxygen. It's just not hydrogen gas. It's not going to catch on fire. It's like I said earlier, it's yeah. the most energy efficient way to store hydrogen. It's also the safest, which is, is so really So a lot of people great. just don't have the education. It's, it's complex, it's a yes. complex field, but you guys have narrowed it down from an energy standpoint, but said, took the other stuff off the table. Mm -hmm. What are the economics of the business? Let's, if we can take us through sort of the, 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 the business model at scale, where are the mm -hmm. costs, what's the, what's the model look like? So really, we're just making reliable energy storage systems that we want commercial customers or data centers to put down on site. These systems can be bought completely, they can be leased, or we can do something that we prefer, and that's sell units of energy. And that's a very, very tried and true method of mm -hmm. getting these energy systems out there. For our storage right now, we're, we're a very early stage startup. We're about two years out there. We're storing energy at about $250 per kilowatt hour of energy, um, which is very comparative to lithium. And in terms of the power out, we're at about $1,000 per kilowatt of power out, which is higher than what is competitive, but we're still very early yeah, stage. Yeah, you, you, this scale, if you, if you cross mm -hmm. over, there's going to be scale. What's the, what's the uh, Scope us the opportunity in, in your mind's eye. Okay, you're, you're essentially building it out. So you're not, mm -hmm. not going to be competitive, but it's the breakthrough that matters, right? So the breakthrough mm -hmm. storage and, and all the compliance around it, which makes you feel comfortable. But when it kicks into gear, what do you guys see as the scale side of it in terms of without it versus the, obviously the, 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 the tension and the contention for electricity and power is high, but what's the scope? Scope the scale. We, we want to be more than just a hardware company, more than just an energy storage company. We want to be what we call a micro utility, right? We see a lot of these problems people have. They aren't solar energy problems. They're not problems with energy storage. They're reliability problems. They're access to green energy problems. They're planning out the amount you're going to spend on energy. That, that's a huge problem people face. And these are problems with the utility. And we simply see that as a result of between where you use energy and where it's generated, 
hundreds of thousands of miles. And that's where all the problems happen. That's and the they, don't, they don't care about hardware. But when you put a huge bank of energy storage on site, you can just shift that place where you get your electrons to just 10 feet in front of your door. And that solves the problem of always access to green energy, always have access to these renewable yeah. electrons or cheap electrons, and, and just having yeah. the reliability that your energy's there. Yeah. Nothing's ever Bring energy to the party. I mean, when we talk about bring compute to the data, Dave, they're bringing energy to the problem. People have been predicting this for a while, kind of back to the future. Mm -hmm. And you're enabling that. And you said that you, it sounds like you prefer a consumption model. Yes. Right? So how, can you explain a little bit more about how that works? So if I'm a customer, you tell me what I'm buying and how you replenish it and the like. So just like you get your energy bill every month, right? And it tells you how much energy you used. You would get that from our system as well. And the, the true vision we have is you're not just pulling energy directly from our storage system we want to essentially become your utility, that we plug in directly to the wholesale grid, and we will make sure you get your electrons from the wholesale grid where they're overproduced all the time. If you look at either gridstatus.io or CalISO, the wholesale producer of energy in California, there is so much thrown away electricity. And that's where we get these negative prices, that's where we get these very inexpensive prices, and that's what we want to pull from in the middle of the day and to charge up this backup reliable energy storage such that at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you're just kind of pulling from that. And so Lumen will handle all of that scheduling. The, the technical term is an energy service provider and that's what PG&E is. And most people we talk to, you would think, <laughs> we just want to get reliable energy. They're like, I hate PG&E. Yeah, I want to well get off. <laughs> they cause a lot of fires, and uh, no one likes them. No, but this is this is the breakthrough. I mean, this is what we need because you know the forecast is there's not enough energy to power the servers, power and cooling. We just had another startup on earlier. They're doing the cooling side with solid state, but having this kind of form factor, mm -hmm. one, two, and then horsepower behind it could be game changing. I guess the question I want to ask you is, as you're in this entrepreneurial curve here. You know, it's hard, startups are hard. You're down to eight grand, <laughs> your partner, you're like, okay, what do we do yeah. now? Now you got up and running, you got some financing. Awesome. You got to build this out. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you're working on? Give a plug for people watching, what you're look, looking for, obviously more, maybe more funding, more hiring. What kind of people are you attracting? Give a quick plug for the company. My quick plug is, if you want reliable energy and you're interested in working with a startup, give me a call. My, my phone number is 650-388-0869. We want to put systems down today. We can make them today. We have the production capacity to do it. And, and we are working out of San Francisco and you can see where we build it. It's yeah. not crazy. It's cool. I mean, it's a cool project to work on. If you're like going to get your teeth on something hard problem, what kind of engineering backgrounds are you looking for? Materials, mechanical, what is the, give us the, give us the uh, profile. We're looking for electrical, electrochemical engineers, mechanical engineers, thermal engineers, and, and just people that want to solve hard problems. You know, we, we often look at it as this is our take on just building up energy storage. And there's really nowhere else in the world right now that you can join a very small scale team and just start building energy storage. Imagine how hard it would be to do this with lithium batteries, you would have to have clean suits. It's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you, uh, you patents? You yeah, know? so we, we're actually filing a, um, our whole suite of uh, patent filings next week, actually. And by September 7th, we should have about 50 patents on the whole thing. So, I mean, I, I'm a very nice guy. I, I look very young, but we, we have a really great team behind us, supporting us to make sure that we own this technology and we will tackle this space. I love you it. You know, we're, we're not anyone's doormat. When you're in, and you're in Redwood City, you're in the, the valley here? We're in San Francisco. San Francisco, okay, got it. And how much money have you raised? Uh, we've raised 3.1 million to date. Okay. All right, anyone watching, get that funding checkbook out. Bruno, thanks for coming on and great, cool. great to have you. I'm glad what you're doing. We need more power, more energy, we need more GPUs, Dave. Dave, this is an infrastructure revolution. I mean, it really is. Congratulations.
Awesome, thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, right, we'll, Next time we'll go deep, we'll go deep in the weeds. This is theCUBE in Palo Alto, our studio. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. The Silicon Valley AI infrastructure leaders are here, breaking it down. We'll be back with more after this short break.